On a sunny Sunday morning, the small village of Alvarez slowly awakened to another day of devotion and communion. The chapel bell, an ancient building with moss-covered stone walls and large stained glass windows, called the Faithful to Mass. It was a day like any other, except for the unexpected presence that would soon disturb the community's peace. Father Lorenzo, a middle-aged man with graying hair and eyes full of kindness, prepared for the celebration when he heard a noise coming from the entrance. It was Leo, a stray dog known to everyone in the village, who, contrary to his usual calm ways, rushed into the chapel with frantic energy. The dog, fixing his attention on the new statue of Mary the chapel had received, ran straight to the altar and began barking furiously. Leo, what troubles you, my friend? Father Lorenzo asked, surprised by the dog's agitation. Leo didn't respond, of course, but his behavior was answer enough. The parishioners began to stir, murmuring to each other about the dog's strange behavior. This is a bad omen, whispered an elderly woman, crossing herself. There must be a logical explanation. Maybe an animal is hiding there, argued a young man, trying to remain calm. Father Lorenzo, attempting to restore order, approached Leo, trying to calm him with caresses and sweet words. Leo, calm down, please. There's nothing here that can harm you. But Leo didn't calm down. He continued to bark, his eyes fixed on the statue with an intensity that seemed to see beyond what humans could perceive. Could he see something we don't? murmured a young mother, holding her child closer. Tension grew in the chapel, with the parishioners divided between irritation and curiosity. Some demanded that Leo be removed, while others defended the dog, suggesting that his reaction could be a divine sign. Let us continue with our Mass. I ask that you keep the faith and remain calm, announced Father Lorenzo, trying to overpower his voice over Leo's barks and the murmurs of the congregation. However, even as the Mass continued, the incident with Leo cast a shadow of mystery over the Alvarez community. What would have been just another Sunday of devotion turned into the prelude of events that would test the faith and unity of all. As the day progressed, Leo's behavior continued to be the main topic among the villagers. Discussions bubbled in the streets and homes about the meaning of his reaction. Do you think Leo sensed something bad coming from the statue? questioned Maria, the bakery owner, as she served fresh bread to a customer. I don't know, but animals have sharp senses. Maybe he's trying to warn us about something, replied the customer, taking the bread and gazing at the chapel across the street with a pensive expression. Meanwhile, Father Lorenzo found himself alone in the chapel after Mass, gazing at the statue of Mary with a mixture of admiration and uncertainty. What are you hiding, my saint? he murmured, more to himself than to the image in front of him. Leo's arrival at the Alvarez Chapel and his inexplicable reaction to the statue of Mary marked the beginning of a series of events that would reveal long-hidden secrets, testing the faith and courage of the Alvarez residents. What started as a peaceful Sunday quickly turned into the prelude of a mystery that would envelop the entire village in a quest for answers. In the days that followed, the tranquility of Alvarez was replaced by an atmosphere of restlessness. The incident with Leo in the chapel was not forgotten. Instead, it became the epicenter of a series of conversations and speculations that permeated the streets and homes of the village. Meanwhile, Father Lorenzo felt increasingly tormented by doubt and worry, questioning the origin of the statue and what it might be concealing. One night, while reviewing old chapel records by candlelight, Father Lorenzo found a note about the arrival of the statue, mentioning only that it had been anonymously donated with no further details. Who would have an interest in anonymously donating a statue? And why? he wondered, feeling the weight of responsibility on his shoulders. Determined to seek answers, Father Lorenzo called a meeting with some of Alvarez's most influential residents. Among them was Clara, a respected teacher, Joao, the blacksmith, and Sophia, 
the chapel choir leader. Together, they discussed the possibility of investigating the origin of the statue and the reason behind Leo's behavior. I saw Leo this morning, still lurking around the chapel. It's as if he's on guard, remarked Sophia, concerned. Animals have a different perception than us. If Leo is acting like this, there must be a reason, added Joao, crossing his arms thoughtfully. I agree, said Father Lorenzo, and I fear that if we don't find out what's happening, the peace of our community may be threatened. The meeting ended with the decision that they should carefully examine the statue to look for any irregularities and, if necessary, consult an expert in sacred art. Father Lorenzo also committed to trying to find out more about the anonymous donor, hoping it might offer some clue. In the following days, as the investigation into the statue continued, strange events began to occur in Alvarez. Animals from Su Antonio's farm, the region's largest milk producer, suddenly fell ill without explanation. Donna Teresa's crops, known for their abundance, showed signs of infestation, despite meticulous care. The community was in turmoil, and many began to suspect that these adverse events were somehow linked to the statue and Leo's warning. It's a curse, whispered some villagers in the shadows of the nights, while others clamored for a quick solution to restore the village's harmony. Father Lorenzo, despite trying to maintain calm and rationality, couldn't help but feel a growing anxiety. He knew that superstitions could quickly turn into panic, and he was determined to find answers before fear spread further. On a cloudy afternoon, while Leo kept watch outside, Father Lorenzo and some volunteers began to examine the statue. Carefully, they ran their hands over the surface, looking for any anomalies. It was then that Clara, inspecting the base of the statue, felt a slight depression under her fingers. Father, here, feel this, she called out, moving aside to give room to the priest. Father Lorenzo approached, and upon touching the spot indicated by Clara, clearly felt a discrepancy in the texture of the stone. A small, almost imperceptible crack seemed to have been skillfully disguised at the base of the statue. And now? asked Sophia, looking at the priest with expectation and concern. We will need appropriate tools to investigate this further, replied Father Lorenzo, his voice laden with determination. Something tells me we are about to uncover what Leo has been trying to alert us to. As they prepared to explore the mystery hidden in the statue, the residents of Alvarez could not foresee that they were on the verge of a discovery that would forever change how they viewed their chapel, their faith, and the mysterious connection between Leo and the statue of Mary. After obtaining the necessary tools, Father Lorenzo and his team of volunteers, including Clara, Joao, and Sophia, gathered in the chapel at dusk. The sunlight filtered through the stained glass windows, bathing the interior in vibrant colors, while Leo watched attentively from outside as if aware of the moment's importance. With delicacy, they began to work on the crack Clara had discovered. As they removed the superficial layer, a hidden cavity in the base of the statue was revealed. Inside, to everyone's surprise, they found a small wooden chest, weathered by time, but clearly placed there intentionally. This is incredible, murmured Joao, his eyes wide with surprise. Who would have put this here, and why? Father Lorenzo opened the chest with trembling hands, revealing its contents, a set of old manuscripts and a metallic object, which appeared to be an ancient exorcism cross. The manuscripts, written in hurried handwriting, contained accounts of a previous priest of Alvarez about a series of inexplicable events that plagued the village centuries ago. Events that were attributed to an evil presence. This explains Leo's reaction, said Clara, reading over Father Lorenzo's shoulder. He must have sensed the presence of this evil. The documents detailed how the exorcism cross had been used to banish this evil presence and how subsequently the items had been hidden inside the statue to prevent the evil from returning. The statue of Mary, therefore, served as a silent guardian, protecting Alvarez from forces 
seeking to disturb its peace. With the discovery of the chest and its contents, Father Lorenzo and the villagers realized that the recent turmoil might be a sign that the evil presence was attempting to resurface. They now knew that it was not the statue itself causing the problems, but what it concealed. Determined to protect the village, they organized a blessing and exorcism ceremony in the chapel, inviting all residents to participate. Leo, who had been a living alert to the hidden danger, was honored as a special guest, receiving affection and recognition from all present. On the night of the ceremony, the chapel was filled. The air was charged with tense anticipation, but also with hope. Father Lorenzo, dressed in ceremonial robes and holding the ancient exorcism cross, led the community in prayer, invoking divine protection against the forces of evil threatening their peace. As he recited the exorcism prayers, an unexpected storm erupted outside, with lightning illuminating the sky and thunderous echoes seeming to resonate the priest's words. Leo, sitting calmly beside the altar, watched it all with a serene expression. Gradually, as the ceremony progressed, the atmosphere in the chapel began to change. A sense of peace and light filled the space, dissipating the shadows of fear and doubt. When Father Lorenzo concluded the prayers, the storm outside ceased as suddenly as it had begun, leaving behind a profound calm. In the days and weeks that followed, Alvarez experienced a renewal of faith and community. The problems that had plagued the village disappeared, and the residents felt a deep gratitude for Leo, whose intuition and loyalty had protected them all from an invisible danger. Father Lorenzo, reflecting on the events, felt a profound admiration for the wisdom and mystery of divine creation, recognizing that even the humblest beings can have a grand purpose. Leo, now adopted by the community as a hero, symbolized the connection between the divine and the earthly, a reminder that faith in all its forms has the power to unite and protect. The Chapel of Alvarez, with its statue of Mary still standing, became a symbol of hope and resistance against the forces of darkness, a guiding light for the village and for all who sought refuge in their faith. And so, through unity and love, Alvarez thrived, blessed by a lasting peace that echoed like a prayer of their ancestors. The exorcism ceremony in the chapel of Alvarez marked the beginning of a new era for the village. The evil presence that once threatened the peace and harmony of the community had been banished thanks to the courage and faith of the residents led by Father Lorenzo and guided by Leo's protective instinct. The chapel, now purified and blessed, returned to being a place of refuge and hope, a beacon of light for all who sought solace and guidance within it. In the months that followed, life in Alvarez flourished as never before. The harvests were abundant, the animals thrived, and the villagers lived in a state of gratitude and joy. The story of the battle against the evil presence and the victory achieved spread, transforming the village into a place of pilgrimage for those who sought to witness the power of faith and divine intervention. Leo, the brave dog who played a crucial role in protecting the village, became a living legend in Alvarez. His name was synonymous with loyalty, courage, and the mysterious bridge between the human and the divine. Children followed him wherever he went, and adults treated him with the respect and affection reserved for a guardian. Father Lorenzo, reflecting on the events, decided to record the entire story in a new manuscript to be kept in the chapel as a testament to the strength of the Alvarez community in the face of evil. He wanted future generations to know the importance of vigilance, faith, and unconditional love. Lessons taught by Leo. One day, on a golden autumn afternoon, the Alvarez community gathered in the chapel for a special ceremony in honor of Leo. A plaque was unveiled, installed in the chapel garden, with the inscription, To Leo, the guardian of Alvarez, whose courage and love protected us. May his story inspire courage and faith in all of us. The ceremony was a moment of great emotion for all present. 
tears of gratitude and smiles of joy mingled as Father Lorenzo blessed the plaque and, by extension, all the inhabitants of the village for their unity and strength. In the heart of Alvarez, the statue of Mary remained, now seen not only as a symbol of Christ's mother, but also as a reminder of the village's journey from darkness to light. The statue was a silent guardian of the stories, secrets, and miracles that had occurred in that sacred place. Over time, the story of Alvarez and the legend of Leo became intertwined in the fabric of the village, a legacy of faith, courage, and community. The village continued to thrive, an oasis of peace and hope in an often tumultuous world, a living testament that, even in the darkest hours, light can emerge, guided by faith and unconditional love. And so, the story of Alvarez, Father Lorenzo, and Leo remained, a beacon of light for all who sought inspiration, reminding everyone of the presence of the divine in the simplest gestures of courage and love.